Hey, everyone. So happy to be here today. Uh, I'm Adrian Spire, head of community over at Vanilla Higher Logic. Um, we're a forum platform, as many of you know. Uh, we're so happy to have Kylie Montanero from Flowcast today with us today to talk about how she uses Vanilla Higher Logic. And I'll just let her take it away. Go ahead, Kylie, please. Thanks, Adrian. Happy to be here. I'm excited to chat with you all today. As Adrian mentioned, my name is Kylie Montero, and I'm the community manager for the Flowverse, Flowcast's accountant-only community. I've been in the community and advocacy space for over six years now, and I've run programs at organizations such as Influitive, Sage, and Sage Intact. I'm really passionate about developing relationships, and I always see my customers as people first, which is very helpful in the community industry, as you know. In my free time, I'm a rescue dog advocate, uh, an amateur baker and a fan of true crime. And as for Flowcast, we create accounting workflow automation for accountants, by accountants, and it's great that we have so many people who formerly were in the role of our customers now working at the organization. I joined in September of 2020, and we were evaluating software right off the bat. We purchased Vanilla in October. We did a soft launch to a small group of customers at the end of November. We did a full launch to all of our customers at the end of January. So we've only been launched for about seven or eight months, um, but we will have over 780 members from over 550 organizations. And currently our community is for customers only, but we do have plans within the next six to 12 months to expand it to all accountants. When we were evaluating software, uh, some of the main reasons we chose to go with Vanilla were because we had a dedicated CSM, they're definitely thought leaders in the space, and we love being able to have access to all of their great content. Uh, and it was a very customizable platform. So we found that having the customizability on the theming and the look and the feel and also the um, integrations for the platform was really important for us. So we're very lucky in the fact that our challenges were not that we didn't know how, how our customers felt about us um, and things like that. So we have a very excited audience who loves to engage in our product and with our team. And our goals were not to create a support community and not for brand recognition. So our challenges were a little bit different than some communities. We really wanted to be able to uh, provide more opportunities for our customers to interact with each other in accounting, surprisingly to me, uh, there's a lot of gray area. So our customers love to connect with each other. Uh, accountants also have a professional license called their CPA and they need continuing professional education credits or CPEs to keep that license. And we're off able to offer them those for free. We also wanted to be able to scale our communications. It's great to talk to your CSM or to receive an email, but we know some of those emails often go unread. So we wanted to provide another outlet for customers to connect with us. Uh, and we're also, we recently raised our Series D and are growing rapidly. Uh, so we wanted to make sure we could keep our customers happy during this period that's often very busy. And finally, something that we knew could be a challenge, um, but was more prevalent, even once we launched our community, was accountants aren't really familiar with the community space. Uh, in marketing and CS, there are tons of communities, and most professionals are very accustomed to the idea and understand what they are and what they're for. But in the accounting industry, there aren't really a lot of programs like this. We really wanted to make sure it was easy for them to understand the value and to engage. So if we look at our goals and strategies for our community, we really wanted to increase value for our customers. And that meant to provide them things like industry news uh, and also create peer-to-peer -peer connections, whether that's networking campaigns, mentorship opportunities, or just an everyday conversation. We wanted to have streamlined rollouts of our product and feature releases. And we also created a job board to help them find uh, career satisfaction. We're able to do this with a lot of the functionality in vanilla, I think, but most importantly, the categories and just the different forums we're able to have. For customer happiness and education, uh, like I mentioned, those educational credits are super, super important for our audience and for them to be able to get them for free is a huge deal. We also wanna make our community someplace fun and entertaining for our customers so they can grab a cup of coffee, take a break and you know, share accounting jokes and puns. And we're able to um, create a lot of our surprise and delight 
through the information we're gathering from our community. So customers are sharing things like uh, pictures of their pets or their favorite hobbies, and we're able to take all that and provide a really personalized experience for them. Uh, our customers also love the gamification aspects listed there, such as the leaderboard and the badges. And then for customer activation, we're looking to uh, drive more customer advocacy from our customers and also identify those customers who we might not know about previously. They might not be the loudest ones, but they definitely are advocates of our brand. Just to kind of build a picture of what some of these uh, functionalities look like. On the top, you can see people can flow can toggle right to the Flowcast app. So if they're reading an interesting thread and they get a new idea or some inspiration to run a process differently, they can head right back to the app and do that. The upcoming events is a huge section for our audience and we run things like fun um, events like networking and baking events and our coffee masterclass, as well as our conference and those CPE eligible webinars. Then in the yellow banner, you can see we're calling out our conference there, and we use this a lot for our advocacy initiatives as well. In the middle, you can see our monthly leaderboard, and our customers are super incentivized to get those badges you see on the right and climb the leaderboard. And then we have um, the polling functionality, which we use for fun initiatives, like what's your favorite type of coffee, but also things like which topics would you like to hear more about, uh, or which presentation would you like to see at a conference? And then to solve the big overarching challenge of accountants not really being familiar with this space, our community has to be very user-friendly. So we really liked the customization of being able to make their community look and feel like our products and our website. So it just feels like another extension of our brand. All the featured categories at the top make it easy for people to come in, figure out exactly where they want to go and go right to the content most interesting to them. We even built out a getting started section so customers can figure all, out all the ins and outs of the community. So let's dive into some of the results we've seen in the seven or eight months that we've been launched. First, we ran a networking campaign where customers could opt into the program, share a little bit about the things that they were looking to learn and some of the areas of expertise they had. And we have, we called them a coffee chat series and we sent them uh, a Starbucks gift card to make that a little bit more fun too. Initially, we were hoping to get 50 members. And then once we got a hundred, we had to cap it for the time being, um, but we were really excited to get so many people interested in connecting with their peers. Previously, feature and product announcements and company announcements were done through email or our CSMs. And now the community is a major part of any of those rollouts. And it's nice for customers because they can interact with the posts in the community where an email, you really don't have that opportunity. We've seen a lot of peer-driven content from our audience and people are asking questions and it's so nice to see them answering the questions of their peers as well. And we are very proud to say that we have 100% uh, of our questions answered in the community. So we really take it personally to make sure every one of those customer questions are answered whether it's by one of their peers or someone on our team. And last, like I mentioned, our events are super popular. So these are different educational webinars, fun events, networking sessions, things like that. And we posted uh, over 36 of those events so far with 150 uh, attendees from the community. And we already have a couple of events coming up for the beginning of the fall with over 60 registrants for those. And something that we've noticed was we're getting a lot of executive engagement. In my time running other communities, this was a big area um, and a big struggle for us. And so it's nice to see that about a third of our audience is controller, director level, and above. And we even have you know, VPs and CFOs coming into our community to engage. In the customer happiness and education section, you can see uh, some screenshots of the events that we've thrown, like our coffee tasting and our escape the room. We've received five out of five event ratings from our audience and 100% say that they would attend another event. Since January, our NPS score, which was already quite high, has increased 14 points. While we can't claim it's all because of the community, I do believe it is a factor and our customers are really enjoying the added value they're receiving. 
we've been able to collect a lot of great customer stories. Customers are sharing their wins. They're sharing uh, different use cases. And it's so nice to see them engaging and sharing those with others. And then anecdotally, we've gotten a lot of positive feedback uh, on our customer community. One of our customers said she's never seen anything like this. Uh, and she really hopes that we keep it going because she loves all the extra value and the fun breaks she has in her day uh, and the events as well. And then in some of the results for customer activation, uh, since Q4, we've seen a 26% increase in advocacy activities. And while some of these are incentivized by our CSMs, our community has been a big driving force as well. We're really proud to say that we've been able to help all departments in our organization. And looking at product, we sourced over 30 beta testers in just the past couple months, and we had to put a cap on it because so many people were uh, opting into this opportunity. Previously, products found it you know, fairly difficult to get some product feedback. Um, we put a post in the community that got over 35 pieces of feedback in just three days. And for thought leadership, we've been able to source one of our community members to speak at our upcoming conference. And then folks were even hand, raising their hand to speak at other conferences and panels on our behalf. And then supporting the top of funnel, uh, over 25% of our online reviews have come from the community, which is great. Uh, and we wanna make sure that all the opportunities we're providing to our customers are mutually beneficial. So there are things that are helpful for them and helpful for us. And our customers know that they're seen as thought leaders when they do things like online reviews. And I know that was just kind of a quick snippet into how we're using Vanilla and the programs we're running in our community. So if you have additional questions, feel free to shoot me an email or reach out on LinkedIn. Thank you. Hello, everyone. My name is Molly Sprout, and I am a digital workspace manager at Baker Tilly, an international advisory tax and assurance firm. We have 60 offices around the world and approximately 5,000 team members, um, a lot of accountants, auditors, consultants. My home office is based out of Milwaukee, Wisconsin, but Baker Tilly has allowed us to work from anywhere. So I mostly work out of my home here, uh, which is about 10 minutes west of Milwaukee. My role as a digital workspace manager is to manage the place where everyone comes together our internal community, um, which is in the form of our intranet, Baker Tilly Live, which runs on the Igloo software platform. My story begins the same way many stories do that involve looking back over the past year, things are rolling along just fine, and then a global pandemic hit. Uh, but instead of revisiting the chaos, my story really focuses on the bright side. I wanna talk about the huge culture shift that placed the digital workspace at the forefront of it all internal communication strategies, um, as most people now work remotely, and really how that shift has helped our internal community grow even stronger as we enter 2021. So here's a little overview of our intranet homepage. We launched our intranet Baker Tilly Live, <clears throat> like I said, using the Igloo software platform in 2019. Previously, we had a SharePoint site for our intranet, um, but as our firm was growing, our needs for communicating internally did as well. And um, we really wanted a more engaging intranet platform. Our goals for the new intranet were communication, connection, collaboration, and engagement. So a place for firm news, which you can see at the top here and in this feed on the bottom, um, a place to find and connect with other team members using you know, user profile feature, a social zone so people could share a little bit more about who they are and what they do outside of work, and a place to give each other shout outs, a quick and simple way. Um, Igloo had all of these things in addition to a really easy to use platform. We really wanted to make sure that team members across our firm could easily add, edit, and update their own content on the fly, um, allowing our site to really grow as a tool more robustly but making sure all that work didn't fall on the internal communications team. As far as success metrics, most important to us when we launched was driving people to the site. Um, so thinking about metrics, we really focused on readership of our firm-wide stories, looking at how many people were reading, as well as overall visits to our site. Um, in the three months after launching, we had a 21% readership of our news story. So not the best, but honestly not the worst either. Um, 
we're also starting to see a slow dribble of people getting used to the engagement features on the platform. But we got really great anecdotal feedback on how visual and engaging the site looked. We did also hear from some people that were supposed to be kind of a serious industry and the new site just felt too much like social media, liking, commenting, sharing photos, constant stream of information, which honestly was one of the reasons we really liked Igloo. Um, the features are really similar to the types of things our team members are already engaging with externally. So we thought <laughs> we thought that was a pro. Um, so we just kept, we rolled with it. We kept adding content. We rolled out new pages and really worked on defining defining our editorial content strategy. And a year into our launch, in March of 2020, we had a 60% increase in total page views, which was awesome, um, after a year. And then, as you know, <laughs> everything changed. Um, we went from 60 offices globally to 5,000 offices. Um, everyone was clamoring for information and tools and resources and ways to continue to be productive, ways to connect with each other. And honestly, the job of the internal communicator became one of the most important jobs in our organization. Suddenly, our digital uh, workspace took on a whole new role. It was now our virtual home office. With that, we also started to think about how we were going to measure success. Um, visitors and readership still being so important, we wanted to make sure people were coming to live for the information and the tools that they needed. But now engagement kind of took on a new life. Like, are people connecting with each other? Are they finding ways to engage? Um, are they taking advantage of the tools we're putting out there? And impressions, even if they're not clicking into our articles and reading them, are they still getting to some visibility on what we're putting out there? Are they still seeing those headlines and, uh, you know, images at the top? I was very grateful during this time that we went with Igloo. Um, it made it super easy to create new pages and content, grant permissions for other people to edit, change guidelines, make updates in seconds. Um, we had over 135,000 visits to our COVID hub that we honestly threw up in a day <laughs> and continued to evolve it throughout 2020. Um, we also saw an increase of 19% in our new story readership and a 30% increase in engagement or social zones, the area where people can kind of post photos of what they're doing. It really became the new water cooler. Um, you know, as we shifted to working from home, it's where people connected. It's where they had conversations, commiseration, a laugh. Um, and yes, this middle picture is my child eating coffee grounds. Gotta love it. Um, our internet strategy shifted just from communicating, which is still super important, but really also to focus on this connection piece. Our internal community was the place that everyone could be together and we leaned into that. It also started to shift from just the place you get things done, but the place you need to keep moving. Um, we added content to help support our working parents, um, mental health resources, tons of engagement events. Uh, Igloo has this great call to action widget, which I use to create a fun visual calendar of events. People could click into each event and learn more and register right there. Um, these are all sort of fun engagement events that we did throughout the year. And that sort of RSVP feature right on um, the intranet was one we hadn't used before. So, um, and now we use it all of the time. So it's kind of our first foray into that um, tool. So, and it worked out really nicely. We also created this hub for reflections. So again, I use that same widget in a different way to um, put in a variety of sizes of images. This page was really focusing on people's stories throughout the year. Um, you know, reflecting back on what they went through. You can scroll through people's stories or you can easily click right on that page to add your own story as well. More than ever before, our firm was all coming together in one place. Um, so it really kind of benefited our intro night in that way. And anecdotally, those people from the beginning who are our holdouts when we launched, they really started to see the value of using the intro net to reach everyone and also, uh, communicate with everyone and engage with everyone, bring everyone together. Um, live really became the source of truth. But the challenge we had was keeping them around after things returned to normal. Are we at, are we at there? Are we at normal yet? I'm not sure. What is normal? 
Um, so a year or so after moving fast and just getting things, you know, up and running and basically surviving 2021 is the year of refocus for all of us, honestly, but also for our digital workspace and its role in the day of our team members. You know, taking the time to level set, really kind of have to consider 2020 a bit of an outlier. Um, we've seen social engagement slow down a ton, which makes sense. Less sharing of your dogs, your work from home windows, your workout routines or recipes. Um, so hot and heavy in the beginning of 2020. And, and all of that sort of slowed down a bit as people have settled in to their new routines. But we've actually started seeing, which is cool, our news communications, um, the engagement on our news stories increase by 23%. Uh, 2020 made people more comfortable engaging with content, talking to people they don't know, and of course, internet commenting. <laughs> Not only that, um, our overall news story readership has gone up too. Understanding more than ever that the intranet is the source of truth. People know where to go. They know how to navigate through content, um, how to find what they need to get their jobs done. Sometimes you hit that like year three sort of slump. What can we do to change things around? But we feel like we've got a really good level of regular consistent intranet use. And we're comfortable with that. Um, I think it's fair to say that some of the growth was organic due to the 2020 state of affairs, but even though we were running at top speeds, we also made sure to be really strategic in how to always position the intranet as the most important tool in everyone's day. Um, really reinforcing it is the source of truth. A lot of the work we did in this area really helped to drive behavior change among our team members. So, you know, we intentionally mapped out all the touch points we could think of to integrate live into. So if the CEO is talking on the town hall, he says, find more information on live, it's there right now. Um, if we're hosting like a panel, like a diversity panel, our strategy and more details and ways to join is on live. Um, for my emails, we're never giving you all the information. We're making you click through to read more on live. So A, it really makes live the source of truth. And B, it helps us track better metrics <laughs> for click through. So um, another really important one that we probably should have done to begin with um, was new hire orientation. So we added an entire section on using live um, in orientation. It's me walking through the site, clicking through, making people feel really comfortable digging around and poking around and things. And we hear from new hires all the time. But you know, in those first couple of weeks of work where you're like kind of learning and not really sure what to do, have a little bit of downtime, they are using that time on live. They are clicking around, they feel comfortable digging around and we really set them up for success. Um, we did a ton of training and communications for our existing team members when we launched, but you know they were used to something else and this was a transition. Now our new team members are really set up for success because they don't feel anything, know anything different, and they also feel super comfortable poking around in the site. So readership is up, engagement is up. We had one of our biggest months ever um, in May of this year. People get it, they're getting what they need. We feel like we were you know, pretty successful in our goals. With so many changes to the digital workspace, we're seeing evolution in other areas of technology that are causing another shift we have to stay in front of. It's one many of you are probably familiar with, um, Microsoft. Um, we're looking to the future. We are a you know, fully bought in Microsoft organization. In 2020, whether we liked it or not, everything became about Teams and Office 365 apps. And we embrace that and you're using one to five apps to execute a project on any given day. Um, and we're fine with that. They do a great job. Um, these applications really, really help us to collaborate and get things done. But, you know, we're, we're also seeing a shift in how people are using each piece of technology in a digital workspace. And, you know, I personally want to make sure that our intranet sort of follows along and still plays a role in everyone's day. Maybe it's not the single role um, like it used to, but it should still play some sort of role. So luckily it was a Microsoft partner. Um, the roadmap already contains ways they're gonna start to help teams integrate better with Igloo. Um, we already have SharePoint integrations that they have built that we use frequently. Here's an example of, this is a SharePoint folder surfaced directly onto one of our intranet pages. So you update everything in SharePoint and it reflects on the intranet. It's just making it easier for people to find things where they are. Um, 
but I'm really looking forward to see, you know, how that kind of evolves. But, you know, we're also thinking big picture. What was the digital workspace in 2019? What was it forced to become quickly in 2020? Um, what is it now? And what do we think it's going to look like in 2022 and beyond, honestly? Um, how can we be prepared without knowing what's coming? Um, we don't know the answer, but are trying to best our best to have these conversations so we can be prepared. Um, my prediction would be that the intranet, once again, takes on a new definition, at least for our organization. It's no longer where you get work done. You're doing that over in Microsoft. It's maybe not where you find people. Again, you're probably chatting with them in Teams. Um, maybe engagement matters less because you've got a team channel for your individual team or your larger group. Uh, maybe you're, you, that's where you guys are chatting about the fun stuff that you're doing outside of work, and that's okay. Um, maybe that's also in the Teams channel where they're hearing news and updates. But I think the intranet remains where you find facts, who we are as a firm, who our teams are, what we do, the source of truth. We really build that, and I think it continues to remain the source of truth. Teams and uh, Microsoft products are always changing. I think the intranet can remain the source of truth. It's a record as well, a record of information, knowledge center, starting point to get you in the right direction. Um, in an ideal world, we could build and define for our team members like this cohesive flow, <laughs> much like this picture um, is how it feels today. So they really can understand where they need to go for what and they can focus less on like where they need to be and in which tool they need to use and more on just like getting their work done. Um, and then on my end, you know, we need to think about what our new measurements of success are. What, are, what do we want to measure? What is important to us to show that we're doing a good job? This is all, you know, discussion. It's to be piloted and trial and error as we work to define something that works for our team members. Um, of course, always leaving the caveat that we don't know what's next um, and things are always evolving. We're just trying to keep up with the flow. So what I can confidently say, um, as I sit in my home office, our intern that's role as a virtual home office is here to stay. And I'm really excited about that. I like to think us even like having this conversation is putting us ahead of the game. So we'll see what's next. Um, thank you so much for listening. I'd love to hear from any of you with questions or connect with you on LinkedIn. So feel free to reach out. Hi everyone, I'm Chelsea Rosero, uh, the Internal Communications Officer here at Heifer International. And I'm really excited to be part of today's Tech Thursday. And I uh, just wanted to say thank you to Igloo and to the Community Roundtable for having me here with you. Um, today, I'm going to uh, talk a little bit about Heifer International and how we've used our digital workplace. Uh, so Heifer International's mission is to end hunger and poverty while caring for the earth. And we've done that for more than 77 years. We've provided livestock and sustainable agricultural training to struggling communities around the world. Uh, we work in 21 countries, and that includes the United States, uh, to support local food producers to expand their businesses so they can earn a living income. What does a living income mean? It means they have a decent standard of living. They can uh, send their kids to school. They have decent housing and clothing, uh, a plethora of things that, that makes up uh, a dignified life. So I have enjoyed working for Heifer for eight years and hope to continue working for Heifer for much longer. Um, so, you know, Heifer currently employs a very diverse group um, of staff. We have roughly 846 employees globally, and the majority of whom are, um, at least over the past 18 months, have worked remotely due to the pandemic. And you can see here on the screen a timeline. I've set up a timeline here so you can see the, the um, evolution of our uh, digital workplace or internet. It's, it's geared towards our employees. Uh, so in 2015, we imagined a platform that would help employees gain a sense of inclusion so their voices could be shared. And our hope was to create a place where employees um, could have conversations with each other and with leadership so that that top-down, bottom-up communication was happening. And we knew a great communication tool could help us 
evolve towards that goal together. So we switched our outdated intranet, which was called Crown Peak, uh, to Igloo Software, and we knew it was a great step forward. And so prior to launch, uh, we held a contest for employees to name our new digital workplace, and the corral was selected. Uh, it, it was selected the winner because I think it really just reflects our farmer-focused work and is a perfect metaphor for what we wanted to accomplish with our digital workplace. And then if you move another year forward in 2017, uh, I rejoined the global communications team uh, from, from working on a, another team at Heifer for a while to help spearhead the management and the direction of the corral. Um, I created a community of super users uh, called The Hive to empower them as content producers and page and, and space administrators within our digital workplace. In 2019 and uh, 2020, the Corral gained a lot of momentum through various internal communication campaigns, one being the Recognition and Reward Program for celebrating Heifer's 75th anniversary. Uh, and that, that campaign is a whole other presentation, uh, which I'm happy to do at another time. Um, but uh, this year, the Corral celebrated its fifth anniversary uh, and the internal campaign we launched to mark the anniversary is what I'll be speaking about mostly today. So after developing the initial site design more than five years ago, we began incorporating various ways to help employees engage uh, regardless of their location. Remember, we're across 21 different countries. Um, and so we wanted to make each method as inclusive as possible so we could expand opportunities for engagement as much as possible. So when the pandemic hit, uh, Heifer's, head, Heifer's headcount was impacted due to layoffs and employees choosing different career paths. And at the same time, the corral was undergoing an evolution to align with Heifer's strategic shifts. Um, our programmatic work and some of our internal departments adjusting to the world around us. So in 2021, Heifer saw an influx of new hires as that new structure was being set up. And this group of new hires was very unfamiliar with the Corral's navigations, its feature, features, and the processes that we used to make our digital workplace what it is. So my goal uh, was and continues to be uh, empowering our existing and new employees to confidently engage and navigate our digital community. So I took a two-part approach to gain momentum towards this goal. The first solution that I implemented was uh, Corral Tours. And these are monthly Zoom meetings on the last Friday of every month where existing employees, but targeting new hires, uh, of course, learn the basics of our digital workplace. During these sessions, I give employees a virtual tour of the corral and teach them how to navigate the site, how to add content, how to use our advanced search, how to engage with colleagues, all the options that are available to them and the resources that are available there and how to find them. So during the tour, I also highlight the Help Center, which you can see on the slide here. This is a space within our community that contains a knowledge base of the Corral features and how the site integrates with other systems. Staff can find support contacts here, such as our uh, IT, our people department, um, other systems contacts, uh, as well as quick tips. Uh, I will put out a blog every now and then of quick tips and new features that are available um, to use within the corral. There's also a feedback forum where employees can share their thoughts and insights from using the corral so that we can take those insights and recommendations and better our site for our employees. We also have a subscription center where people can go and quickly adjust the information that they're getting through email notifications so they're getting the news that they want at the frequency of their choice. So at the end of these corral tours, um, I will wrap up with a question and answer session uh, so that I can address specific users scenarios. And with um, an average attendance of about five people, that's very doable. 
I love that these are kept small. So we've got the new hires from the past four weeks. And then occasionally, you know, somebody who's been here for a while just wants to jump in and get a refresher. And it's really nice that we keep them small so that I can address those specific user scenarios. Um, and, you know, while these sessions will primarily focus on introducing new hires to the corral, those, those pop-ins of those longtime employees um, have given feedback to say, this has been really helpful. I'm glad I joined this. Um, I'm, I've learned something new that I didn't know was available. Um, and of course, because we are continually evolving the corral, this is a great um, space for longtime employees to come get that refresher and learn what's new. Okay, so during the month of July, You'll see a little video popping up on, on the screen here um, to showcase what I'm talking about. During the month of July, uh, employees across the globe could visit a space within our site to celebrate the Corral's fifth anniversary. One page showcased the Corral's history and the major milestones and awards our digital workplace has accomplished. You can see me scrolling down here that shows the timeline that we looked at the beginning of this um, presentation, of course, a couple of the awards listed there. And there's also a before and after page. And this page includes a few glow up examples of our internet uh, from Pepper's internet platform called HIP, uh, when we were using our old platform Crown Peak to the corral using Igloo software. Lastly, and most importantly to meeting my goal, uh, was the mission possible scavenger hunt. Employees could quickly uh, complete, employees could complete quick tasks uh, or missions for the chance to win a personalized Jenga set. And if you're asking why Jenga, well, the fifth anniversary is the traditional, the fifth anniversary is traditionally uh, commemorated with a gift made from wood. Um, so the missions spanned Corral features like updating your personal profile, using advanced search, RSVPing to a calendar invite, or downloading branding assets or publishing a blog. All features that um, staff would need to use on a daily ba basis to make the most out of their Corral experience. So for example, you can see here, uh, the um, one of the missions was to use the advanced search to find a hidden document using only two pieces of information, the author and the creation date. And once an employee found the document, they commented as proof of finding the document, uh, which was another way employees could feel confident engaging. Just that fun little addition of commenting with a GIF or, or learning how to comment. So uh, we had numerous employees uh, play this game, but we only had five complete, all five missions. And you can see here, our winner was um, Carrie from our philanthropy team. So to measure the engagement and activity and adoption within the crowd, I use Igloo's monthly report service. Um, you can see here on the screen that we've had um, we've been trending upwards over the past year. And in that first graph, the activity by member chart calculates the average activity per member um, and graphs this activity over the previous year. It also includes a dotted line, a dotted trend line showing the current trend of the activity. This chart is similar to the overall activity, which is the bottom one. However, it instead displays uh, our overall average member activity over time. Uh, when used in conjunction with the overall activity, it helps me determine whether the corral is growing or declining in use. Um, the overall activity chart calculates the corral's overall activity and graphs it over the previous year and also shows the current trend. So as I'm looking at this graph, I can see that the corral tours, which began about a year ago informally, um, and then have been a set schedule of, of monthly, um, reflect that current trend. People are a little bit more um, uh, confident in, in jumping into the crowd and using the features because they've had, they've had an introduction to it. Um, and then that jump that you see in July, there's a big jump there, that reflects the increase in activity related 
to the timelines of the Mission Possible internal campaign for our fifth anniversary. So those were those two solutions were just a couple of things um, I believe are contributing to our upward trend of engagement. Now this chart um, graphs the trend of total activity, um, regardless of the, the number of uh, members in our site for each channel and object within the corral over the previous year. The chart scale is logarith logarithmic, <laughs> it's a tough word for me to get out, uh, in order to properly visualize all the activity in one place, uh, since some channels and objects tend to be um, far more active than others due to their function. Um, for example, a page generates a lot more activity since they host many types of varied content within them. So this charge value really comes in in the ability to show the absolute amount of traffic my members are generating across all the corrals content types from blogs, calendars, uh, forums, et cetera. Okay, thank you so much for letting me present today at today's Tech Thursday. And I am available on Twitter at Vila Zero, and you can also reach out to me on LinkedIn. I'd love to discuss any questions you might have had from today or uh, just to get in contact and stay in touch to um, learn from each other and, and our shared experiences. Thank you so much.